Hello friends, both old and new, welcome to this channel, Narcocon. Today, today I'd like to chat about cognitive dissonance. And the first line of a song comes to mind, Hello darkness, my old friend. Cognitive dissonance, for anyone that's not familiar with that term, means basically that recovering from narcissistic abuse we tend to get this information, understand we were with an abuser, realize that wasn't good for us, but yet still crave their attention or crave to be with them. And there's an awful lot caught up in that. But cognitive dissonance is a term used to cover the fact that even though we know they were really bad for us, we still see them in a good light and still crave them or still want to be with them, with the person that, you know, was the narcissist. So that's it kind of in a nutshell. But this has come up so much recently and it always does with people that are on a journey of recovery and health post-narcissistic abuse that come and say, why am I still? Why? Months after this person has discarded me, dumped me, left me, or I've left them, are they the only ones I think about? When I wake up in the morning, I think about them. I think about the relationship. I ruminate. I still want to be with them despite what they've done to me. Why? How can I move forward away from this trance, spell, fog, it's called a lot of different things. So let's just have a little look at this. Let's just have a little look at this darkness, this awful not being able to escape after the narcissist has left and after the relationship is over. And when we know better what is going on with us. So on many different levels, narcissists attach us to them. They attach us um, spiritually, emotionally, sexually and physically and in every way that they possibly can because it's pertinent to them to attach people very securely in order for them to extract what they want from their targets and victims. Be that purely attention, adulation, money, status, whatever the narcissist is after, it's important for them to attach their victim securely and long lastingly and everlastingly. So that should their supply with the new supplier, whoever they walk into the sunset with, in inverted commas, they can feel secure that there's a good backup of people in storerooms around the country that they can dip into should they need a little top up or should they need to be rescued from a bad situation that they've got themselves into. So I know you get the picture. So it is important for the narcissist to set you up to have cognitive dissonance. It feeds into their game and it's a benefit to them. For you to overcome your cognitive dissonance, a huge step is watching these videos, obviously, but let me just explain it with an analogy a little bit further. Our emotions are created by our thoughts and how we think about a situation and how a situation is fed to us much like a computer getting a program input as software into its hardware body. The computer gets this program fed into it. As we get a, the narcissist's program of love bombing fed into us in the initial stages of the relationship. And that program more or less stays with us because that is the reality that we bought into. So we're left with that reality going forward, even though the devaluation has occurred and even though we've been shocked with a discard maybe or we've had to escape 
because the narcissist was cheating. That's the program that was programmed into our amazing brains. And the brain is an amazing piece of equipment that we have within us, that we can manipulate for our own happiness. And that's not like a narcissistic manipulation. It's we're given this gift within our heads that brings us through life, that functions for us, that we, we need to use in relation to cognitive dissonance. So we've been set up with a program by the narcissist in our mainframe, in our brain. That is the program that is running after the narcissist has long since gone. And we are, by thinking about the narcissist in a positive light, even though we have the education now or we're getting it, we're continuing to run the narcissist's program. So our brain is feeding us emotions based on the thought processes that we're going through. And you can say, well, Paula, that's all very fine and dandy, but how do I change that? So as we get the information on the narcissist and we learn that they were an abuser, our computer is trying to update. Let's use this as an analogy, an, an analogy. I can't say the word, sorry. So we're updating our computer software, our program. You know when the computer has a circle that goes round and round and round as they're updating and it's taking a while to update or the Wi-Fi signal isn't good and it's just going round and round and round. That's actually what's happening in our brain. The program is so strong that to try and overwrite it is going to take time. But the more you input, any time you get a signal from the old program that says, you know, I got great feelings around the narcissist. I miss them. We had an exciting time. Any time that thought comes into your head or you start to ruminate, turn that thought upside down. And immediately, and I don't mean take pleasure and sit outside and, you know, look into a stream or look up at the sky and let that thought continue. That is the old program trying to stop the update from coming through and setting in and overwriting the old software. You update that thought with something about yourself. The reason that experience was so good was because I was there and I input emotion that was true into that experience. The narcissist was an empty vessel. The experience happened because of me. And then talk about yourself. Put the thought about yourself into your mainframe. I am a, a great person. I'm great fun. I'm very loving and I'm great to be with. Whether you actually 100% that, believe that at this point in time when you're feeling very low after the narcissist, it doesn't matter. Put that thought, overwrite the old program with the update. Update your software. And I know I sound like a total loony, but it works. Update your software every single time your brain sends you a memory about the narcissist as being good. Finally, that little circle will stop going around and round and you will have a new program that makes total sense of the old fashioned program that you had before that the narcissist tried to put into your brain. Now, there are also a few techniques that you can use to ensure that the updates get installed and stay installed and no viruses get in like the narcissist's hoovers. So once a virus gets in like a narcissist's hoover, you make sure that you have your security software well and firmly installed so that virus is eliminated. So you're sitting here and you're saying, yeah, I can understand that. It sounds, you know, it sounds like an easy step to make to write a new program for my brain. And then my brain will give me these thoughts about myself being positive and about what really happened with the narcissist and the repetition of that will actually 
the thought will actually give you a different type of emotion. The emotion won't be missing the narcissist. The emotion will be clearing the fog of what actually happened with the narcissist. And it'll also be in, in st stimulating within you your self-esteem, your ability to make people happy, your ability to make yourself happy. And the narcissist will diminish more and more as you keep feeding your wonderful, miraculous brain this new information. Now, that's the basis of destroying cognitive dissonance. There are other things you can do. There's a huge amount of other things that keep you connected to the narcissist. But that's the actual basis of rewiring your brain with the correct information, the reality of the information about what actually went down with the narcissist. You can start by doing practical things like if you were living with the narcissist, if you have things in your house that still belong to the narcissist. Some people find it very hard to let go of sentimental object things that might remind them of the narcissist or that they shared together with the narcissist. I have found that if you can over, over a time span, let go of what you're able to let go of gradually. Um, you do when you see things in your house or, you know, maybe a piece of jewellery. Anytime you see that or even a piece of clothing that the, the narcissist may have remarked on, anything like that keeps that person alive. When you think about something, when you see something and it brings the narcissist to mind, if you can get rid of those things slowly and you can do it in a beautiful way, make it a grieving process for the lost hope, for the lost future, for something that did make you feel good at the time. Let it go in a beautiful way to make space for new memories. And that brings me on to the next point. In time, when you're able, go to places that you went with the narcissist that did make good memories for you. And remember your big contribution in making that memory and make a new memory there. Let go of the old. This is again to, do, to get rid of my old friend, the darkness of cognitive dissonance. Make a new memory there. Release the old memory and put into your new program the new memory. Bring a friend. Make sure it's a good occasion. Allow yourself to be sad. Allow yourself to be sad for the time and the experience that you had that was real for you and that you experienced in a really valid, truthful, authentic, although I don't like the overuse of that word, but in a very real way. Honour yourself and the memory. This isn't about the narcissist. The narcissist didn't create that memory for you. They participated in a clinical way. Even though they may have laughed and showed those type of emotions, there was an agenda to that experience and that was to attach you to them further. And some people will even say, are they conscious of doing that? And sometimes they actually are. They can see the effect that maybe they suggested an outing to you or a holiday or a vacation or whatever. They can see the effect that that's having on you. And that makes them happy in the sense that the narcissist can be happy. It makes them feel empowered because they know once they give you a pleasurable experience, they have more control over you emotionally because your brain is telling you, oh, that experience was good. I want more of that experience because that made me feel good. And I know if I feel good, that's good for my survival. So let's go there. Again, rewiring the brain, just sending it repetitive signals to overwrite the previous software. That experience was good because of me. The narcissist did not have my best interests at heart. 
And how dare they? How dare they use me? How dare they lie to me by making me or trying to make me believe that they cared and that they were on the same level emotionally as me. They actually lied to me. They lied through the experience and the way they presented themselves to me. They pretended that they loved me and that they, I, we were in this together and we were on the same wavelength. They were paid total false witness, totally false in that experience. They just had an agenda and they enjoyed watching me enjoy the experience, knowing it was attaching me further to them and knowing that they were gaining more power and control over me. How dare they? How dare they do that to another human being? So guys, you can in so many ways facilitate your own healing. And another thing about the cognitive dissonance is not to just say, I can't help it. I just can't help it. I just keep thinking of the narcissist and I want to go back to them or I want them back here or I'm feeling very low and very sad and I ruminate a lot about the narcissist. You can help it. Of course you can help it. It's not easy, but most things that aren't easy are very worth it and much more worthwhile the harder they are to do and the sense of satisfaction you will get. You can do it. Everybody that sets their mind to something for their survival can do it. It's a case of not really wanting to do it. It's a case of wanting to stay in that place because you don't want to move on. And that can be fear based. That can be fear based. And it can also be based around something that's really worth looking into. This isn't the case with everyone, but it is the case with a lot of us. And this is a bit shocking. It's saying that you're comfortable with the abuse because the energy around that abuse is familiar to you from your childhood. This is something that you can definitely work on in understanding what happened to you as a child and understanding why it felt familiar and comfortable to be with that narcissist, putting the two and two together and saying, it's now time for me to redefine myself, who I am and my experience of life and my expectations going forward of what I will and will not allow in my life. So guys, you're the people You're the people that are full of emotion, full of life, have beautiful spirits, have wonderful energy. I'm not saying we're all perfect, so don't get me wrong there. But you're the people that have the God-given gift not to have a personality disorder. So it is so within your means to recover from this and blast cognitive dissonance where the sun don't shine. Because this is the narcissist's gift, curse, spell that they put over you. And it's a case of rejecting that and giving it back to the narcissist and saying, this doesn't belong to me. This was imprinted on me or in me by you purposefully. And I don't want it. I reject it. I know what it is and it's not for me. You had your time with me. You were false with me. You conned me to a certain extent. I understand the con now and I don't want any more of it. Take it back. Go away. I have a space to make in my brain for all the new experiences I'm going to have. And even if you're very low, that you're finding the survival stuff very hard, please invest in yourself. Consider investing in yourself. Go and get the help you need. 
Make a new life and don't give up. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Guys, help me out here. Like, share, subscribe or comment how you got over your cognitive dissonance or any tips or tools you can give other members of our community to get over this really shitty stage in the recovery from narcissistic abuse. Until the next time, I hope that was of help in relation to the cognitive dissonance. Keep fighting. Keep going forward. You've got this. See you next time, guys.